Hey guys, I'm sure you've heard about prepared statements and you may be wondering what does it mean and why should you care about it? Well, today's video is going to be all about prepared statements. In short, prepared statements is a security feature that prevents against SQL injection. And I'm happy to let you know that this security feature is available on all SQL supported databases on AppSmith. So let's get into showing you why you should care about it and how to make use of this feature. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. All right, so right here we are on the canvas and to show you why prepared statements are important and how to use it, we're going to build a simple login form. This is going to be a contrived example because I know you won't be building a login form like this. It's going to be a form that allows user to enter in their email and then we perform an SQL search for that email address and pull out that user's email. If the email is valid and has a valid user record, then we can let user log in. But if not, the user's record is not valid. So it's a contrived example and you wouldn't be doing this in production apps. So let's go ahead to build the UI for the application. I would need a form widget. So we have a form widget here. And inside of the form widget, we need to take in user input. So we need an input widget. So I'm just going to bring this here and expand it all the way. And we can say this is the email field. All right, so here we have the UI of the application built. Now let's go um, configure the logic that performs the search on the database. And to do that, we need to create a new query. So I'm just going to click on the plus icon and let's go to new data source. Let me use the opportunity here to show you that you actually have some sample databases you can play with whenever you're trying to mock up stuff or play with some ideas on AppSmith. So you have the movies database. This is a MongoDB database. It doesn't support SQL, so we would not be using this today, but we have the users database here that is a Postgres database and supports SQL. So we would be making use of this. So to use this database, all you have to do is click on it, or if you already have an SQL database you would like to make use of, you're also free to go ahead with using that. So I have this connected here and I already had this connected. So we have a duplicate database. I'm just going to delete the duplicates and then we can make use of the user's database. So we have the user's database here and I'm going to go ahead to create a new query. Let's call this query find user. All right, and this is going to be a select query. So we haven't configured this query yet to take in the user email. But if I go run this as it is by default, you see that we have a couple of um, users coming out, um, about 10 records as you can see, and each record has an email. So we want to write the query in such a way that we find a user based on the given email. So let's go configure or edit this query a bit. So this is going to be uh, select star from users where email is equal to the email address supplied by the user who is using the app from the input. So this is going to be input1.text. All right. And you can see in the evaluated value pane that you have a variable called um, dollar sign one or variable one. This is because we have prepared statements turned on by default, but let's turn it off and uh, let's play with this without it being turned on. Uh, so taking a look at this, you see that we have some empty string and we can go supply an email and check out how this query works. So let's go in and supply a user, for example. So let's see, uh, Sophia at example.com. All right, so that's a valid user email. And now we can go into run this query and see if it actually works. So we have one record being returned from the database and we can see it's the same email address as we supplied. And since we have a valid user record, we can actually go on to log this user in. This works fine and good for now, but what if a malicious user comes to use the app and actually tries to inject some malicious SQL code that will be executed on the database? Uh, to show you an example of some of those codes, let's just head back to the input. So instead of the user actually entering in an email address, the user enters in some SQL like this, or empty string is equal to empty string. All right, so this is not an email address. Uh, this would be an input from a malicious user. Let's see how this plays out in SQL. So let's head back to the find user query. 
and taking a look at the evaluated value, you can see that you actually have a modified SQL statement here because we still have the select star from user where email equals to empty string. Now we have an additional SQL code which says or null is equals to null essentially and we know null is going to be equal to null so this filter would always return true and that would end up grabbing all users from the database so i can go run this and show you that this would not work as uh, the designer expects so i can run this and you can see that we're actually pulling out all 500 records from the database which is crazy a malicious user can go inspect the network tab for example and see all of these records and then the user would be able to steal private or sensitive information if we have any sensitive data stored on this table but we actually do not want this to be the case we want to be able to prevent against users entering malicious code or trying to drop the database because likewise the user can go in to write an sql statement to drop the user's uh, table or the entire database and that's just going to work as fine. So we want a way to be able to prevent users from entering in malicious code. And to do that, AppSync has this security feature that allows you to use prepared statements. So we're going to turn this on and heading back to the query, you can see that there's a little bit of difference from what we had previously and what we have now. Now we have a variable one, which means that whatever input is supplied by the user, that's going to be converted into a parameter. And that parameter will be safely checked and escaped and it is not going to be executed as an SQL query in the database. So we still have the malicious SQL input here. So now that we have prepared statements turned on, let's run this and see if there's any difference in the results. So I'm going to run this. And you can see that the response is no records to show, which means that the input from the user was not executed as SQL, but rather was executed as a plain text and was searched in the um, email column in the user table. So this is the prepared statement feature I was telling you about. You should always have this on and uh, by default, AppSmith has this turned on for you so that you don't have to worry or think about it. So this is the security feature. Please make sure you use it every time you have SQL queries written in AppSmith. And there are some conditions where you may not be able to use SQL queries. So that's listed right here. And I'm also going to leave a link to the documentation that talks a bit more about this and some things you should also know. All right, we just saw how to use prepared statements and why they're very important. Now, talking more about security, you may be interested in logging in your users in a secure way without having to deal with all of the security pitfalls that come with handling authentication. I'm going to leave a video right here that shows you how to log in your users using Google Auth and Xano. So I'm going to leave a video right here so that you can go check it out. The links will also be in the description. Also, you may want to see secure your AppSmith instance by self-hosting in your private cloud, which would definitely be more secure than having a public AppSmith instance. So I'm going to leave a video here that shows you how to securely self-host your AppSmith instance using Docker. All right, so that will be all for today's video. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please do ask in the comment section and I'll be sure to take your questions. That's all for today. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.